Alright, let's face it, in any given multiplayer game, we all wonder how we can be the best and win as many matches as possible. In the case of playing a victim in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, learning the easiest escape paths is a surefire way to help you get a lot more victories under your belt. So let's do exactly that and find out which option is the easiest escape for each map in the game. In this guide, of course we're going to cover the easiest escape options on each map, but we'll also briefly cover each victim and their abilities. But a little bit more on that later, let's take a look at the Family House map first. This map is viewed by some players as a killer-sided map, meaning that with all the open space, the killers have an advantage of being able to find victims with more ease compared to the other maps. Keep this in mind as you make your attempts to escape the family. Our overall objective on this map is to make our way out of the basement and towards the front of the house. This is where we're going to find the easiest escape option on this map, which is the generator exit. This escape exit is located down the front driveway of the house. Before you make your escape attempt, as a victim, you really want to make sure you stock up on lockpicks. You can find these lockpicks in the blue tool chests scattered throughout the map. The good news is that the generator escape exit itself does not require you to pick a door in order for you to escape from the family house. For this reason, it makes it the easiest escape option on this map. Once we free ourselves from the bindings, we need to determine which basement door we should exit from. Ideally, you want to use the door leading to the den, which is located in the basement storage. You of course won't always be able to leave the basement this way, depending on the actions of the killers, but if you can manage to escape the basement through this door, you're going to be in a great position to start making your escape. Once you spend some time picking the lock on the door and freeing yourself from the basement, quietly make your way to the generator. There are two spawn points for the generator. Hopefully it's located in the front of the house near the fence line because this will make it even easier for you to escape this way. But it also may be located in the small barn near the back of the house, which will add a little bit more challenge to your escape. But once you find the generator, you will need to shut it off, which does take a few moments. Once the generator is off, most players' first instinct is to make a run for the exit immediately. But this very well could be a death sentence since you're practically running 300 yards of open space, begging for the family members to chase you down. Instead, use these safe areas indicated on the map to strategically sneak over to the front yard. These green regions are where the tall grass and bushes are located, so use them wisely to help you keep out of sight of the killers. This is where you can get the best vantage point to determine that there are no killers around, and you're clear to make a run for it. Before we get into the other two maps and learn their easiest escape routes, it's important to take some time and understand a bit about each victim and their abilities. Choosing the wrong victim for you can turn an easy escape into a horrible nightmare. When it comes to the ease of escaping, the three victims that land on the top of the list are Connie, Anna, and Sunny. Connie's ability allows the player to bypass a lockpicking minigame on doors. This is absolutely crucial, especially if you can save this ability for the actual escape door. Anna's ability gives her a significant damage reduction for a short period of time, turning those intense escape moments when a killer is on your tail into a walk in the park. And lastly, Sunny's ability to hear if killers are near can give the players a better insight if it's a good moment to turn off a generator or make a run for the exit. For the other two victims, Leland and Julie, their abilities aren't terrible, they're just far less impactful. Leland's tackle ability could come in handy when stunning a killer, but unless it's used perfectly, it won't help you too much in terms of escaping. Similar with Julie, even though the extra stamina is nice, her ability only prevents the cook and Johnny from being able to track her for a short period of time. But it does not affect Grandpa's tracking ability, and being that Grandpa's ability is the strongest tracking mechanic in the game, her skill is very limited. Using this information of all the victims, make sure you select the best one for you to help make sure that these escapes are even easier. Let's get back to the escape routes and talk about the Slaughterhouse map. This is viewed as a more balanced map with a mix of open space for the killers, but also a good amount of areas for the victims to hide. Our main objective on this map is to make our way from the basement to the north side of the map which is where the car battery is located. This is the easiest escape option on this map, but again, this could be up for debate. Some may say that the generator is the easiest on this map, but the junkyard where the car battery is located is a lot more isolated from the rest of the map. 
This usually leads to killers leaving this area unsupervised for extended periods of time. When trying to escape the basement, the most ideal door to escape from is located in the north storage room that will lead you to the cattle chute. Use these safe areas to quietly make your way through the slaughterhouse building and to the car battery. But once you get there, don't touch the battery yet. Make sure the coast is clear and pick the lock on the gate before you turn off the battery. This is super important because when you turn off the battery, it tends to draw attention to nearby killers. If the killer investigates the noises of you messing with the battery, they're going to catch you long before you pick the lock on the gate. Unlock the gate first, then turn off the battery, and then get the heck out of there. Finally, we have the gas station map. In terms of balance, this map tends to lean in the favor of the victims for two reasons. Reason one is due to the spacing. There is the least amount of open space in this map, allowing victims to easily hide or slip away from the killer's sight. And as for the second reason why this map favors victims, well, that's exactly why we're here in the first place. The gas station is the only map with five escape exits. And the additional exit on this map happens to not only be the easiest escape option on this map, but also the easiest escape option in the entire game. Our goal is to make our way out of the basement to the right side of the map because this is where the storefront exit is located. When trying to escape the basement, we ideally want to take the thicket tunnel that will allow us to climb the well leading up to the thicket. But again, if this feels too risky depending on the killer's positioning, exit from a different location. Once you're above ground, using these safe areas, start making your way towards the general store. The reason why this exit is so easy is that other than unlocking two doors, there is no other defense system, like a generator or car battery, that the victim is required to power off in order to escape. All you need is two lockpicks and proper timing to unlock these doors and escape from the family's grasp. Now even though these are the easiest escape options in all three maps of the game, Depending on the skill level of the killers you're up against, you may need to change up your strategy a bit and pick a different escape option. In order for you to be the most effective victim in the game, you'll need to become a master of all escape routes. To help you become the escape master, click the video on your screen to learn every escape route along with the layouts of each map in the game. We appreciate you for sticking around, and thanks for watching.